Hey everybody, in today's episode of the Alpha Concepts Podcast, we're going to be doing a little fact-checking on Mayor Lori Lightfoot and some of the comments she made about Chicago's so-called gun violence. In an August, I think it was 18th interview uh, on MSNBC, Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot said, 60% of illegal guns that come into Chicago every year are from out of state and then specifically named Indiana and Mississippi. In the same interview, Lightfoot says people can go over the border to Indiana and buy, quote, military-grade weapons, her words, and bring them back in any quantities that they want. The mayor went on to say there are people who can't fly in a plane but can still buy guns. The mayor also said we need universal background checks to close the gun show loophole. The mayor said the ATF was not empowered to go after dealers who sell to straw purchasers. The mayor said that she has done a very good job bringing down the shootings and homicides. The mayor said that to stop the violence in Chicago, she needs federal assistance. So those are some pretty hefty claims. Let's take a look at them one by one and see if they're true or not. First, she said 60% of illegal guns that come into Chicago are coming from Indiana and Mississippi. So starting right there, are 60% of the illegal guns coming from out of state? Well, a 2017 ATF firearm trace report shows the mayor isn't wrong. Approximately 60% of guns uh, do come, I should say crime guns, do originate from out of state. That means 40% of crime guns originate within the state. Also, the same report says these firearms were used by persons other than the original purchasers. That means that it's not somebody going, buying the gun, and then using it in crime. It's been either stolen or, or resold. That means stolen guns and straw purchases, um, they're already against the law. A straw purchase is when someone who can pass a background check buys a gun for someone who can't, and that's very illegal, punishable by up to 10 years in jail. People can go to the border of Indiana and buy military-grade weapons, in her words, and bring them back in any quantities. So can we buy military-grade weapons in Indiana? That is a hyperbolic statement because military-grade weapons aren't sold to civilians anywhere in the nation. I believe she's likely referring to the semi-automatic rifles that civilian disarmament advocates are trying to brand as military style. So let's go with that assumption. First, the AR-15 isn't military-grade. Second, for someone who lives in Chicago to buy a firearm in Indiana would require a federal background check. So what exactly is the Chicago resident avoiding by buying their firearm in Indiana rather than Illinois? Further, so what if people are buying AR-15s in Indiana? Rifles are so seldom used in crime, it's almost a non-issue. The same previously mentioned 2017 ATF trace report also shows most of the guns recovered are handguns, not rifles. The FBI Uniform Crime Report shows statistically year after year after year that handguns are used in murders approximately 45% of the time for all murders. 45% are committed with handguns, whereas rifles are used about 2%. 2% in all states. Chicago's own report says rifles are used just 5% of the time. So how is that assault weapon ban working out for you, Chicago? Why aren't we seeing the violent crime in Indiana and Mississippi that we're seeing in Chicago? If anyone in other states can go buy whatever guns they want, why aren't they using those guns over there? USA Today put together a very comprehensive report updated January 2020 showing violent crime per capita using FBI data as the basis for comparison. Mississippi ranked 38th least violent state and Illinois ranked 19th. If easy access to guns are the cause of violent crime, wouldn't it make sense for Mississippi to be more violent than Illinois? If we look again at the FBI statistics, Chicago is ranked the 10th most murderous city in the United States per capita. Now, I know what you're saying. Everyone says Chicago is the murder capital of the, the country, but we're talking per capita. So what about Indiana? Indianapolis ranks 16th most murderous, and Mississippi, not even a single city in Mississippi made it onto the top 100 list. On a side note, I found it interesting, California, which we all know has some pretty insanely tough gun laws, had 18 cities on their top 100 list. So here we have a state that has probably the most tough and strict gun laws in the entire nation, and they have 18 of the most murderous cities in the nation. 
Lightfoot, all I can say about that is this, this myth is busted. The mayor went on to say there are people who can't fly in a plane but can still buy guns. This is both true and false. Simply being on the no-fly list doesn't prevent someone from buying a gun by default, and nor should it. There's anywhere from 500 to 2,000 names on the no-fly list, and nobody really knows for sure. It's a secret government list. There are some surprising names on this list that found out the hard way. Senator Ted Kennedy, recently deceased Congressman John Lewis, multiple different children, actors, and journalists have made it onto the no-fly list. Should these people be prevented from buying guns also? The list of presumed innocent goes on and on. And in fact, aren't we all presumed innocent until proven guilty? But Mayor Lori Lightfoot, I do challenge you to produce just one criminal in the city of Chicago who bought their gun legally and was on the no-fly list. I challenge you to produce just one gun bought by someone on the no-fly list later recovered at the scene of a crime in Chicago. The mayor went on to say we need universal background checks to close the gun show loophole. Illinois has universal background checks. Remember, 40% of the guns used in crime in Illinois still originate in Illinois. Whenever someone buys a gun in Illinois, some form of background check is always required. As we previously stated, most guns recovered were not in the possession of the original owner because these guns are either stolen or straw purchases. Simply put, the buyers are already passing background checks. The mayor said that the ATF was not empowered to go after dealers who sell to straw purchasers. But dealers really aren't at fault here. The dealer has no way of knowing that the buyer intends to illegally sell the firearm to someone else after they buy it. Dealers are performing background checks in every single state. That is federal law. Would we be punishing U-Haul or Hertz if someone rented a vehicle and then later used it to run someone over? Instead of going after innocent dealers, why not go after the actual purchasers? The ATF has been doing just that in recent years. A quick check of their website shows numerous press releases where straw purchasers have been charged. But why leave it solely up to the ATF? Illinois has straw purchase laws. If you want to get tough on straw purchasers, why wouldn't you start at home, Lori Lightfoot? In 2017, a woman from Mount Prospect, Illinois, a suburb of Chicago, I know it's outside of your jurisdiction, Mayor Lightfoot, bought multiple firearms for prohibited persons, including known gang members. Her penalty? 15 days of community service and 12 months of probation for putting multiple guns on the street in the hands of prohibited violent offenders. The fact is that it was difficult to find many cases in Illinois of sales or transfers of firearms to prohibited persons, but easy to find the ATF cases. For the mayor to claim the ATF is not empowered, well, perhaps Lightfoot needs to look in the mirror on this one. The mayor said that she has done a very good job bringing down the shootings and homicides. Let's look at the numbers. Numbers don't lie. In 2019, according to one of my favorite websites for tracking crime statistics in Chicago, heyjackass.com, there were 460 people shot and killed in Chicago, and there were an additional 2,292 shot and wounded. However, in Chicago, in the year 2020, year to date so far, there have been 450 shot and killed and an additional 2,700 shot and wounded. These numbers are of August 25th, 2020. Miss Lightfoot, I get that 2020 has been an outlier of a year, but come on. The claim that you are bringing down the shootings and the homicides is nothing short of a lie. The mayor said that to stop the violence in Chicago, she needs federal assistance. The president has offered assistance on several occasions. The mayor has refused assistance on several occasions. Let's be clear here. The federal assistance Lightfoot is speaking about is nothing short of enacting Illinois-style civilian disarmament laws nationwide. Lightfoot wants a federal assault weapons ban, and she wants federal universal background checks. That is the kind of federal assistance that Lightfoot is asking for. And as we've already discussed, with facts and numbers, these laws don't stop people intent on harming each other. So what could ease the violence in Chicago? If nearly all of the mayor's claims have been busted, what would help? Step one? Step one would be to stop blaming the how people are committing evil and violent acts. There shall always be a how. We have to look at why people are committing evil and violent acts. What is their motivation? Step one would be to properly identify the problem because statistically easy access to guns isn't causing the violence. There's no single answer to this problem. Everyone wants to find the easy button. Let's press this button and fix the problem, but there's no one single answer. It's going to take a multiple approach. 
The violence in the city is largely caused by drug gangs and largely restricted to specific neighborhoods like Inglewood, Austin, Garfield Park, and Humble Park. We have to address the cause of violence in these specific neighborhoods. Why are people killing each other? Drugs, money, lack of economic opportunities in these neighborhoods, broken homes, poor education. Maybe if the Cook County State's Attorney didn't decline to prosecute 25,000 felonies last year, maybe if the State's Attorney actually locked up repeat violent offenders, criminals wouldn't be completely unafraid of punishment. There is nearly zero punishment for violent crime in Chicago. Prosecuting violent offenders would be a great start. Look, it took generations to degenerate. And it may take generations to fix, but we aren't going to make any progress until we properly identify the cause and stop blaming guns. That's going to wrap it up for this episode. I think numbers don't lie and easy access to firearms aren't a contributing factor in the violence of Chicago. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast for your weekly dose of Second Amendment discussion every single Monday morning. And if you'd like to be a sponsor of this podcast, reach out to Fire and Iron Media or contact me at alphaconcepts.com slash podcast. If you want to be a guest on the show or you have an idea for the show, definitely hit me up. And as always, be armed, be trained, and be alpha.